Hey everyone, this is Nitro. So it's Monday, the start of a new week, and I thought I'd do another episode of the Nitro setup videos. So let's begin with, as always, covering my the results of my dragon farming. And let me just bring that up quickly. So just give me a moment to arrange it. So. There we are. So, the previous week was very, very dry in terms of SSRs. Uh, you can see it from last week's Nitro Startup videos. And in addition to that, so on Monday, I did five runs of the Fire Dragon, and that gave me no SSRs at all, right? As well as, uh, so given that last week was completely dry and I did five additional runs on Monday with no SSRs, I decided to start doing random accessory box purchases and the very first box I purchased gave me a Vidar's Rose. Yeah. So after that, it turned dry again on Tuesday, five runs, no SSRs. On Wednesday, I got my very, very first Tenyo's headdress. Yeah. Core piece of equipment for all mages and healers in PvP. So that made me quite happy. Uh, it is my first one, so I'll definitely start building it up. In preparation for the Apex Arena playoff matches. Yeah. With that said, I don't really expect to go that far in the playoffs. You know, I'll be lucky if I get into you know the top 64. You know, if I get any further than top 64, it'll be a miracle. Yeah. Most likely, I'll get eliminated in you know the top 256 or top 128. So, in any case though, continuing on. So that was a very, very nice piece of equipment, the first one that I got of it. And then on Thursday, five more runs gave me nothing. I did seven more random accessory box purchases, got nothing. And then after that, the world event gave me an Anasis armor. Timeless Trial was a Holy Grail, which I turned into ore. And then I decided to go crazy on gambling, which I don't know why. I just I just decided to gamble like crazy. So three weapon gambles gave me nothing. I turned all of those into ore. Right? Devil Axe, don't need. Seal Guardian, I already have three of them. Bloody Melody, don't need. On Friday, five more... Uh, uh, Five more dragon runs gave me two SSRs, a carbon fiber armor and an assault armor. So that was another 200 ore. So once again, I went crazy on gambling, and this time I decided to gamble for armors and helmets because my thought was I need armors, especially mage armors, because I realized I have too many mages and healers and not enough armors for them. So I did three armor gambles, and the only item I kept there was a galaxy cloak. The other two I just turned back into ore. As for helmets, I did three helmet gambles and I got nothing good. The, my thought process here was I'm very desperate for armors for mages and I'm also pretty desperate to get another last rites if possible. So that's why I did the armor gambles. And as for helms, well, I need Tenyo's headdresses and I need King's crowns. So it's not a bad thing to gamble for either of these, right? That's, that was what I was thinking. Didn't get anything good though, so whatever. And then continuing on, Saturday, Thunder Dragon, Helmets, got nothing. Sunday, four runs, got another Devil Sacks, which is another 100 ore. So, overall though, you know, one Tenyo's headdress is a big improvement on my party right there already. So, this week though, overall, it wasn't too dry. In total, I did get six SSRs from random accessory boxes, dragons, and joint battles, which is pretty decent. So those were the results of the dragon farming. And let's just move back into the game at this point. And now, so last week I did do 70 draws on the uh, currently running banner for Illustrial and Claret, right? I told myself after failing to get Claret that I would start saving up for the Yulia and Omega banner because of how overpowered Yulia is. Well, I didn't really keep to that. I was kind of a fool and I actually had, and today, this morning, 
For whatever reason, I decided to experiment around with drawing because I had around 120, 110 or 120 regular vouchers. And I think in total, I was sitting on around 25-ish uh, Trinity vouchers. Those 25 Trinity vouchers came from a combination of all those extra rewards Long Games was giving us from, you know, this event. Uh, and from turning all the crystals that I got into vouchers, right? Because keep in mind, Apex Arena has the reward of um, 150 crystals. And then regular Arena had the usual point reward, right? 20 daily and so on. So the crystals slowly built up from this as well as... Uh, and finally, the World Arena, being a member of the top 10, gave me 200 more Trinity Crystals. So I got a whole bunch of Trinity Crystals, turned it all into Trinity Vouchers. I meant to save them, but idiotically used them to draw a few more times, using up all of my regular Vouchers and Trinity Vouchers and whatnot. Surprisingly though, the draws actually ended up being okay in the sense of I got quite a few SSRs. Unfortunately, they weren't SSRs that I really wanted. <laughs> the first copy of SSR that I got, which I didn't actually keep a... didn't take a screenshot of, was... Shuri. So, she is now nearly 5 stars, just like that. <laughs> um, I mean, I don't even use my Shuri in the first place, so I don't know what how I feel about this. Uh, but yeah, Shuri is nearly at 5 stars now for me. So maybe I will raise her up a bit, bring her up to 5 stars? I don't know. We'll see. So that was the first one. And the other one was of course the one you just saw from the screenshot, which was Illustrial in a single draw. So, still no clarets. I got two copies. In total, it means for roughly, I would estimate, 100 vouchers, I got two copies of Illustrial, one copy of Diharto, and then one copy of Shuri. Four SSRs and 100 draws is incredible, but they were all effectively useless SSRs, so I really don't know how I feel about it. Other than uh, the SSRs though, it was a pretty good week in the sense that I finished a lot of my SR heroes. Right? Fair Kia managed to hit 6 stars. Chris managed to hit six, uh, 5 stars, not 6. Sophia hit 6 stars. And most importantly for me, Varna hit 6 stars since I use her for a lot in uh, PvP. So, a lot of SR characters hit 6 stars. You know? So that was probably the more important element of my drawing on this uh, <laughs> Illustrial and Claret Banner in truth. What this means is, in terms of characters that I have at 6 stars now, I have 33 of them. So 2 more, and I will have 35 heroes at 6 stars, giving me 10 Trinity Vouchers for completing this feat. Is that going to happen anytime soon? To be honest, probably not. Um, I don't really have any other heroes that are close to being 6 stars at this time. For example, Imelda, yeah. I still need 4 more copies of her. Which was good. You know, I got 1 copy of Imelda. It was previously I needed 5 copies, now I need 4. Right? Uh, Iris and Chloe, you need to grind shards of and neither of them will be hitting 6 stars anytime soon. Chris, I actually got a lot of copies of, right? I think I got 3 copies in total. So she now needs just 5 copies, whereas before she was only at 4 stars. You know, Olivier needs to, needs to be grinded, so he's not close at all. Uh, Vargas is still stuck at needing 5 copies. You know, Serena is never going to happen. Lance, I suppose, is the one character that is very close to 6 stars, 
with him needing one more copy, and then, you know, Fairy Key just finished. So I guess if I get Lance up to 6 stars, get a copy of him, and then maybe grind up uh, my Luna up to 6 stars, I may have, I may be able to get those 10 additional vouchers for the Yulia banner, right? It's going to be luck based. I mean, I have to get a copy of Lance and then Luna I am currently grinding. So we'll see how that goes. All right, so current shard farming should be what I talk about now. And actually, I should also mention Shafaniel, I did grind shards of uh, last week because she needed like 28 shards or so, something like that. So I've now gotten my Shafaniel up to 100 shards. And with this upgrade, I now have a five star Shafaniel. At least she's now kind of usable. That 30% additional intelligence definitely helps. But the main thing is the magic lineage cooldown is still only two turns as opposed to getting reduced to a three turn cooldown. So that is still a big drawback, you know. Shafaniel very much needs to be six stars to be truly a viable uh, character for Apex Arena. So that's a little bit awkward. I don't know how I'm going to get that additional 150 shards because I would have to grind her up for 50 days, right? So that's iffy. Uh, I really do want to level up though. I mean, she gets faction buffed by Landius and she is a princess faction buffer. So we'll see. She is definitely one of the characters I really want to build up to six stars, but I just don't know how to fit that in at this time. So we'll see. In terms of shard farming, I'm currently changing it up a bit. I'm definitely doing four shards of Luna right now. Right? Because Luna, um, well, I need to get her up to six stars, right? For her to be true, to, for her to be used everywhere, right? Ancient Call, PVP, and so on. You really want a six star Luna. So switching her up to grinding four shards per day, I need 125 shards. That means I need a month, 31, well, I guess 32 days to finish up my Luna. So that will be pretty, I mean, it'll be reasonably close to Apex Arena's, uh, so to Ancient's Call, right? Ancient's Call, I believe is supposed to be released on the 21st of November. And I'll have my Luna finished, I guess, the 28th of November, roughly. So, or the 27th, I think. But in any case, though, so it'll be roughly in time. So switching Luna to a four shard grind from her current three is the current plan. Other than Luna, um, in terms of shard grinding, I can grind someone else for three shards right and i'm thinking i will finish up my tanks right? your tanks are the ones taking hits they really should be raised to six stars so it'll be juggler and landius who will get shards and in terms of shards i'll probably do three shards of landius and then two shards of juggler no. once landius is finished i'll finish up jug i'll f prioritize juggler and then i'll move on to new characters after that so that after these Characters will probably be Bozel, Leonhard, and Shafaniel, is what I'm thinking at this time. Yeah. Then after that will probably be Listel, Bernhard, and I'm going to have to fit Yule in here somehow. So we'll see. So yeah, you know, a lot of these characters are old school characters, but I think it's important to grind them up for them to be used at six stars. So slowly but steadily though, I'll have my team finalized. And certainly, you know, Listel, Bernhard, Shafaniel, Luna, I think all of these characters that I'm going to bring up to six stars will be used in Apex long term. Yeah. They seem like they, they would be characters that have a lot of longevity in Apex Arena in general. So we'll see. So those are the characters I'm currently kind of looking at grinding up. 
eventually I'll probably want to finish up Renee as well. She's a merit character that I use very frequently. And then, you know, I actually do want to grind up Sakura, Shinguchi Sakura. But she is much lower on the priority list for me, simply because she uses the same gear as all of my other infantry characters, right? Leonhard and Bernhard both want pretty much the exact same gear. Apex boots and balance blades and that kind of stuff. So until I get multiple copies of those items, I don't see a much priority to grind up uh, Shinguchi Sakura. So that's my upcoming plans and that's like in very many ways just even grinding up these characters that I mentioned will probably take me already like eight nine months. <laughs> so my plans for shard grinding have pretty much been set. So continuing on then. So after shard grinding, uh, equipment changes just, it's been a week. Nothing has really changed. I mean, I did re-roll up enchants, constantly trying to get better enchants on the characters, but nothing outstanding came out from the enchants so far. So the setup is pretty similar to that video that I did two weeks ago. I may do another video after Apex Arena about my setup in general. Uh, so probably mid-November, I'll do another you know, full review of all my gear so that you get a guess, I guess you get a view of my gear of how it looks like when I'm going into Ancient's Call. And finally, I guess in terms of training ground, the key thing here is I finished my training ground in terms of using gold items, right? Meaning my cavalry training ground has been fully upgraded, right? My flyer training ground has now been fully upgraded in terms of gold items. So same thing with my assassin training ground. So that was the one big change from last week. All the training grounds are done in terms of gold items, now I need to collect a lot of SSR items to keep upgrading. I don't know how I'm going to do this, frankly speaking. I mean, what I will likely do from here on out is focus on attacking the core attack upgrade for every branch, and I'm probably going to neglect the core defense and core hit points. Right. So the, that kind of focus will probably be my attempt to basically stay within in the competitive range against people to get into Langrisser rank, right? Because the key point for Apex Arena in general is that your soldiers are able to kill off the enemy player's soldiers. Thus, upgrading the core attack will probably help in that sense, right? Of course, ideally you could upgrade all of them, but that needs a ridiculous amount of gold items. And given that I'm free to play and I absolutely don't have the privilege <laughs> of getting one additional SSR item every single day, I steadily have no choice but to fall behind in my training grounds. It's just that simple. Yeah. Right? That priv the privilege, gift of the goddess, sorry, not gift of the goddess, flag of courage for the extra energy run becomes more and more important the further. Uh, you know, as you play more and more. But to me, as long as I can hopefully get into the playoffs, that's more or less what I expect and hope for. So we'll see how it goes. I mean, the only thing I can do right now is slowly transition to doing more Anarchy runs in hopes of landing more SSR gear in general. Uh, sorry, SSR training items in general. And... Yeah, we'll see how that goes. I'm still going to do the, I guess, the sweeps of the dragons though. So my daily sweep chances continues to mostly go into the dragons. And then there will be this one, uh, probably the occasional sweep chance into Eternal Temple. But any additional stamina I have that I would be using will definitely go into any key runs from here on out. So that would be, for example, burgers, right? And yeah, that pretty much covers my current status. I mean, 
my party for PvP. Actually, the one thing about I'm confused about right now is I actually have more characters now, more characters than I need for my team formation in Apex Arena. Because, for example, I can choose between Luna, Elwyn, and Leon, right? I could also throw in the five-star Shafaniel into the party, right, for another AoE attacker, potentially, and Princess Faction Buffer. So there's now multiple options for that last character slot, and I could even, let's say, throw in someone who adds additional mobility, such as, you know, Leticia for Sprint, or whatever, so that my Zerida, if I get the player, is more likely to be able to get into the enemy attack range. So there's a lot of options for that last character slot now, and I'm actually not sure who I should run. No. I've I've kind of crossed out Shafania for now because she's only five stars rather than six stars. But despite that, you know, it's still a tough choice whether I bring Luna or Elwyn or Leon. You know. So we'll see. Elwyn does win matches. So does Luna, however. So it's one of those situations where I'm very torn on the last character for my Apex team. And that pretty much concludes my current video of my current status. Thanks for watching, everyone. Nitro out.